My name is Tanya Fincham. I'm with Oklahoma State University and today we're in Bonita, Oklahoma to talk to graduates or attendees of Atex School here in Bonita. And today I am with Diane Willis Hubbard and thank you for having us. Or thank you for coming. <laughs> Let's start with learning a little bit about you. When and where were you born? I was born in Bonita, Oklahoma. 1947, February 16th, and, and what did your parents do for a living? My dad, he worked as a cleaner and presser of clothes. My mom, she was an LPN, and, and did you have brothers and sisters? Yes, I have uh, two brothers and one sister. Uh, Dwayne Willis Jr., where everybody knows him as Buzz, and my sister is Jennifer Willis, and my other brother is Dale Willis. And where do you fall in the order? I'm the oldest. You're the oldest. I'm the oldest. And were you the bossy yes. one? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and did you live in town or out, out in the country? We lived in town. In town. Describe your house you grew up in. My house I grew up in it was a three-story, I think, 17 rooms. Um, it was on South 2nd Street. Everybody came there <laughs> to play and go on. It was my grandmother and grandfather's house, which he built for a hospital. He was a doctor, and he got sick and passed away, I think it was in 1931 or 33, I can't quite remember. And so my grandmother turned it into a room and board, and the whole family lived there. And the whole family has been living there but I don't know how long. <laughs> but anyway, you know, we are all on our own now. And uh, my brother still lives there. 17 rooms, so you just divided them up between the families, different families? Well. Like brothers, you and? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mostly um, my mother and father and the kids stayed there. Okay. But we always had, you know, other relatives to come in spend the summer. Every holiday we'd all get together and just have a good time. <laughs> Where had he learned to be a doctor? Uh, him? Yeah. Your he went your to uh, Meharry College in Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. And was he from Tennessee? He was from Mississippi. Mississippi. Okay. I can't think of that little town's name. I look it up all the time, but it's a small town in Mississippi. Well, how did he end up in Vanita? You know, I never did really know, but, well, in a way, yes, I do know. Somebody contacted him and told him that they needed a Negro doctor in Vanita. And so he came and he checked it out and decided to stay here. So did, did he, he, he built the hospital. Yes. Excuse me. Did it, op, did, did, was it in operation for any length of time? It, uh, well, as just a, as a doctor's office okay. at first. And then, you know, he built on, made more rooms and stuff for the hospital. And that's when he got pneumonia mm -hmm. and he passed away. How many children had he had? It was nine of them. Ooh. Nine. Well, those 17 rooms came in handy then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The oldest was um, Louis Ryan. He was a teacher in Bonita. He's a science teacher. Okay. And coach. He's in the Coaches Hall of Fame. And now they're trying to get him into the Educators Hall of Fame. And uh, let's see who's next is Aunt Marilyn. 
which is the only one that is still living as she lives in Rockville, Maryland. She's 92 years old. She worked at the Library of Congress until she retired. Uh, Uncle David, he was a research chemist. He lived in Alabama at that time, then moved to Maryland. Uh, Uncle Cecil, he was a pilot. He taught flying. He taught the, uh, what is it? Uh, Black Flyers. Uh, and the Tuskegee Airplane. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, the Tuskegee uh, group. Yeah. He taught okay. them. And uh, he finally, well, he lived in Nashville, Tennessee. And then there is Uncle Herbert. He was a doctor. And he died probably about. Uh, about 10 years ago. And he lived in Atlanta, Georgia. And my aunt uh, Juanita, she was a home ec teacher here in Bonita. And uh, Aunt Laura, she passed away in 1947. And I don't, I don't know what, I, I don't think Aunt Laura did anything. She's pretty young when she passed away. And then there was my Aunt B. She was a banker. And uh, my mother, LPN. I think that's all of them. All very educated and all of them were. And mm -hmm. pictured away from mm -hmm. Benita then mm -hmm. for, for a large All except mm -hmm. my mother and my uncle mm -hmm. Lewis. Mm -hmm. Had, had some of them gone to addicts? Oh, all, all of them did. Had? All of them did. All of them graduated from addicts. Oh, okay. That's impressive, too. <laughs> it was my uncle, Lewis, he even taught at addicts before they integrated. Was he one of the favorite teachers I hear? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, then he moved on to Bonita High School. Made that transition. Helped make others. Yeah. Help, help that transition better for others, too. Yeah. So when did you go to Attics? From 1951 until 56, I think is when it was. And we used to go to the school so often. I was five years old. The girls would, you know, come by the house and pick us up and take us to school with them, you know, the older girls. Mm -hmm. And as they said, since we were going there every day, we may as well enroll. So they enrolled us, enrolled, it, enrolled me at five years old. <laughs> And you were ready. And I was ready. Who was your yeah. teacher? Do you remember? Oh, Lord, yes. First grade teacher? First grade, grade teacher was Daisy Barker. And she taught She taught first and second grade. Mm -hmm. And then Ella Mae Harris taught third and fourth grade. And um, Mrs. Hodrick, I think her first name, she taught fifth and sixth grade. And that's... We, uh huh. That's when we integrated after the sixth grade. Do you do you remember that that time period any? The, the switching to Benita. Oh yeah. Was, yeah. Was it hard or? Well, not, at not first, hard. at first, you know, we didn't want to go, you know. Yeah. And uh, but you know, it got we got used to it. You know, everybody was friendly, you know, and everything. And you know, we all became friends. And, but, and still are. Some of us are still friends. How many students would be in your class at Addicts? Just in your grade? Just your, in our grade. I think we had about the biggest grade, which was about, um, I think it was 12 of us. Oh. Okay, so pretty the, small. Mm -hmm. A good number, a workable yeah, number. Yeah, yeah. And we all graduated together, maybe with the exceptions of two or three that had moved. What would you do for like recess? Oh, we'd go out and play. <laughs> they had playground equipment, you know, and everything. We'd play ring around the roses or volleyball or on the swings and the merry-go-rounds and the slipper slides, 
get all skin up. And <laughs> but we had good times. We really did. Did it have a cafeteria? No. no. Uh -uh. no. We had to either bring our lunch or we went home for lunch. Which did you do? Most times I went home for lunch. So it was walking distance? Yeah, it was walking distance. Uh -huh. and, and what would you have? For lunch, okay. usually a sandwich, or sometimes my mother would fix a full meal at noontime. That was good. Yeah, yeah. So you were close enough to walk. When would you? When would school start? At eight or nine? Or nine. Five? Nine. Yeah, it started at nine. And go to and finish up. Uh, at four o'clock. Oh, longer. Yeah. Interesting. Four o'clock. What were your colors? School colors? Blue and white. Blue and white. Mm -hmm. And the, t the name, team name, or did they have? Um, Warriors. Warriors. And Warriors. Did you attend many of the sporting events? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, since your uncle coached, I guess you did. Yeah, he coached my dad and him. Uh, they had one of the best basketball teams in Oklahoma. And your dad was on the team? Uh-huh. What was his name? Dwayne Willis. Dwayne Willis, okay. What did he, position did he play? You know, I don't know. <laughs> I was little. You were little, okay. I understand. <laughs> no, I was born. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, th I'm thinking about the baseball. He used to play baseball he pretty played good. Baseball. Yeah. They said that he is one of the best play baseball players that there was, and he should have been in the big league. Yeah. And what stopped him, do you think? Well, the yeah. integration yeah. thing, you yeah. know. Didn't help. Uh-uh. Yeah, they said he should have been right up there with Jackie Robinson. Did any of those skills pass on down to the next oh, generation? Oh, yeah, we all, we all played ball, softball or baseball or whatever, but we all did. Well, did you have to work when you were in school? No. 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 Even chores at home? Oh, yes. <laughs> we did. <laughs> uh, we, we washed. We washed dishes. We cleaned. We ironed. I mean, we ironed. You ironed sheets and everything. My grandmother would sit right there and watch you, and you better not put a wrinkle in there. <laughs> She'll make you sprinkle it down. And get it out. <laughs> it starch them too, or just start? Just she would starch them. Yes. Huh? Sprinkle them down and put them in the refrigerator overnight. It would iron them the next day. In the refrigerator. Yeah, to keep them fresh. Oh. Uh huh. And you don't do that today, do you? Oh no. <laughs> Very seldom do I iron anything. <laughs> or were the irons uh, electric? Yeah, they were electric they were like then. Uh huh. But we had an old ringer type. Uh, washing machine where you had to have two tubs of water for rinsing and you know then your wringer type washer and then we hung them on the line. And then you pressed them. Then we pressed them. And I was so glad when we got a dryer. <laughs> I remember the first TV we even got. <laughs> really? Uh -huh. It was in the early 50s. How many stations did you get? I think three. <laughs> hey, all the neighbors come to watch too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then everybody started getting TVs. And so we listened to the radio a lot. Music? Mm-hmm. And I mean, all the kids in the neighborhood and out of the neighborhood would come to our house because we had basketball goal in the back, and then on the south side of the house, we always played ball, and we always had something going. We had two big porch swings. Mm -hmm. We'd break them down all the time. <laughs> we were swinging so high. <laughs> and my cousins and I, it was three of us that stayed just real close, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, we'd get in the living room and we'd play the piano and sing, and open the window so everybody could hear us. <laughs> Could you carry a tune? Oh yeah, yeah, we could. Yes, we could. It was really, we were good. Do you remember anything in particular you want to sing for us? No, no, no. not now. <laughs> not even one little line? Not now. <laughs>
<laughs> so, as a as a say teenager, would you go on dates? Yeah, we did. And, and what occasionally, would you, and what would you do? Go to the movie. That's about it. Here in Vanita, uh -huh. or go to the movie, or either go to a ball game or something. Was the movie house integrated at or? Well, we had to sit up in the balcony, <laughs> and the whites sit down below. But really, we could see better, you know, from the balcony. And they would make sure you didn't sit downstairs? Yes. Someone there to watch? Yes. Mm -hmm. Somebody stood right there. Mm -hmm. Times have changed. Yeah. I know it. I know it. Do you know it. have any issues with going into restaurants or places like that in town? You know, I never did. But there was one restaurant, it still is here, Clanton's. Mm -hmm. They would have the black people to sit in the back. They had a place for them in the back. Mm -hmm. I never would go in there. Mm -hmm. And my mother, she would not go in there. Even if she was still living today, she wouldn't go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just because of that, you yeah. know. But we didn't go to too, you know, we didn't go to too many restaurants. My dad, when he was off on the weekends, We'd get up early and we'd go out for breakfast or something like that. Well, with Vanita being here, were there rival teams for addicts? Any rival teams? Oh, um, yes, yes. Like, uh, where, where, who would they play? Who would be they their would biggest? They would play like Pahuska, oh. um, No Water. Um, Muskogee, um, I can't remember all of them. They have to travel a little I think ways. Tulsa, yeah, they traveled a lot. Mm -hmm. They traveled a whole lot. Mm -hmm. My uncle would pack them just about all in his car. They didn't have buses. His car and maybe another car would take them. The basketball team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of responsibility. Yes, too. it is. <laughs> he probably fed them too. Then. Yeah. 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 Well, his uh, my uncle's sister-in-law. She had a restaurant next door to us, and she would feed the team. And they won state champion. Oh yeah. A couple of times. Yeah. Did the town celebrate, or the, I guess the school did at the least. The school did. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Good times. Yeah, we did. We really had good times. Uh, describe a typical day for you. Like, take us through the building. Where, where would your classes be? Like, well, my first grade class, as you come up the steps to your right, it was the first door on the right. And um, my uh, third and fourth grade was about two doors down from it. And then my fifth and sixth grade was across the hall from it. Then we had we had a big gymnasium, and um, we had big trophy case, and it was full. It was full. Mostly sports or some academic too. Just all sports, sports. sports. all sports. But I'll tell you one thing: you learned. I mean, it wasn't no playing around when it came to learning. They'd spank you. <laughs> Girls too? Yeah. Huh. Well, we had one teacher, she would take your hand and she would bend it back like that and boy, that old paddle. So we tried to stay away from the paddling. <laughs> 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 but I mean, they would make you stay after school, you know, but they would teach you. Hmm. My uncle would even come over to the house and help me with my homework and stuff. Did he do that for others or just because you were a relative? Just because I was a relative, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Did he have a, a library? Do you remember if it had a library? Mm, uh, yes, it was very small, I think. Very small library. Was it just for the students or could people in the community no, use it? No, just for students. Just for students. Uh -huh. hmm. Were most of the classes, well, I know that, that young they're not, but like high school classes, were they geared toward getting you into college or, oh, get, yeah. or getting you into a trade? Oh, oh, yeah. You know, most of the people that graduated 
from addicts went to college. Mm. I know my whole family did. Well, they came from educated people. Mm -hmm. too, yeah, so. they came. They every one of them went. It was important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And was church equally important? Oh yes, <laughs> yes. We went to church all the time. If we didn't go to church, we couldn't go to the movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so who was the disciplinarian at home, your mom or your dad? Well, my mom kind of ruled the roost. <laughs> All daddy had to do was look at us. You know, oh, he gave okay. a certain look and you straighten up. Hmm. <laughs> but they were very good parents, very good. Did y'all meet around the table, dinner table or supper table, I guess I should say. Which did you call it? Dinner, dinner or supper? Or dinner. supper? Dinner. Dinner. Yeah. Yeah, we all had to sit at the table and eat Meal times. together. Mm -hmm. Would you have lunch? Oh, and you came home for lunch. Yeah, I came so home for lunch. You came home for lunch. Yeah, we'd have breakfast. And uh, my dad, he'd always cook breakfast. <laughs> and lunch. Well, we had three meals a day, plus Snacks. I mean, we always had plenty of food. You can look at us and tell you. <laughs> <coughs> well, once you got out of addicts, you went to Vanita High School and mm -hmm. graduated then. Uh huh. What year? I didn't 64. Like 64. And did you have a favorite subject? Well, let me see. What did I like? I liked, uh, <laughs> I liked typing. <laughs> Not stuff math. like that, not math, not science. I kind of like history. Had you planned on to go to college yourself at that at that point? Well, yeah. Were you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I decided. My uh, aunt, she had a real estate business, and one of my aunts on my dad's side, she had a real estate business in Tulsa, and she wanted me to move there and be her secretary, you know. So I did, and that's when I enrolled into uh, Jerron's. Okay. And you, and you did, got a two-year, it was a two-year yeah. program? Yeah, uh-huh. And when you finished that, what did you do? Well, I came back to Bonita, and I worked for the Neighborhood Youth Corps. It's where kids that were dropping out of school, we would get jobs for them, but they had to attend night classes. And we'd take them on field trips and things like that. And then, um, where did I work? Then, um, I think it was Sequoia Furniture Company. And then it phased out, and I worked at um, Cinch. It's electronic connectors for a while. Well, I didn't like that at all. <laughs> so one of my mother's friends, she was the director of nursing at Eastern State Hospital. Mm -hmm. And I came in one night, and I was just fussing. I hate that job. I hate that job. She says, well, come and go to work for me. <laughs> I said, doing what? Secretary work like he's supposed to, <laughs> so she hired me yes. out of the state, and I worked out there for 28 years. Retired in 2000. Hmm. I don't know a great deal about Eastern State. Can you uh, tell us? Tell it's us a, a mental bit? hospital. A mental hospital. Yeah, it's a mental hospital. And did they have many patients then? When I first went there, they had like 2,000 patients. Hmm. When I left there, they had a minimal of about, I mean a maximum of about uh, maybe 200. Wow, big change. Big change, big change. And it's really changed now. They don't even have civil patients anymore. It's all forensic, hmm. all criminals. Hmm. So when did you retire from there? 2000. So two and started in the eight, 1980s in there? Well, I started in 1972. 72. So you saw lots of changes oh, yeah. during that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
would they accept blacks? Oh yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. At that time, but you know, at, at um, they did have a black mental institution in Taft, Oklahoma. Okay. And then they started integrating them too. They cleaned out Taft and brought all of them to Bonita. Okay. And um, what was I going to tell you? <laughs> <laughs> Probably closed Taft then if they brought yeah, them they all Yeah, they closed here. Taft, uh huh. But they opened it up for something else. I, I think it was a prison or something. Hmm. I think that's what they have down there. They do have a prison down there now. Well, did you feel safe working there with the, with the mental patients? Oh, yeah, patients? yeah. I loved it. I really did. Did they have things for them to do? Like, oh, yeah. Gardening or whatever that might be? They, they had a full form. Farm. farm when I first got there. Mm. I mean, they grew all the vegetables. They had cattle and stuff like that. They had hogs. You know, they, the butchered, they butchered, butchered all their meats and um, grew their vegetables. You know, they would, you know, have to buy some stuff. But um, the patients worked. They paid them a certain amount of money. And um, they had other jobs for them to do, too. And since it was a state institution, you know, it really didn't cost the patients anything if they could not pay. So. You want to set this up? I tell you, it, it, was, it was a good place to work, really. It really was. And then it just got, I don't know, just. <laughs> things changed. Cha okay. Things okay. change. Okay. Because we used to just enjoy going to work, you know, just really enjoy it. Hmm. And you were a book, I uh, know. I worked in the nursing office. Okay. And then I worked in the EEG, EKG department. I've been everywhere out there. And then they had this, what they call the ambulance service, where we transported patients to like Oklahoma City, Little Rock, uh, the one in uh, Topeka, Kansas, just all over. And we'd take them to Norman for medical help. Well, they wanted to know if I wanted to do that. So I did that, oh Lord, for about 10 years. And then I quit. <laughs> Two months and I was back. <laughs> I quit and moved to Tulsa. I worked for Avis Reservation Center. Well, I just didn't like that Tulsa traffic and all that stuff, you know. So I came back to Bonita, went back out to the hospital, and I started working in medical records. And I spent my last, say, 10 years in medical records. And Bonita's home, though. You kept, uh -huh. kept coming back. Bonita's home. Didn't ever want to live anywhere else? No, no, I really didn't. Did you meet your husband here? He he was from Benita. He was from Benita. Mm -hmm. So we always ask then, how did you meet? Oh, we just grew up together. Grew up together. Uh-huh. Grew up together and uh, he went into the service and was gone, you know, a long time. And he lived up in Pennsylvania. But he'd come home all the time, you know. So finally, we finally got together. <laughs> <laughs> finally. <laughs> got married when? What year? Uh, 96. 96. 96. Uh, not too long ago. Uh-uh. And he passed away. Oh. So. Was in the Air Force or Army? or Army. Army. Yeah, he, he uh, had a career. And then he worked as a civilian on an army base after he retired from the army. And he retired from that and came back to Benita. <laughs> so he had gone to Avex too? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, everything comes back to there. That's it was a very good school, I understand. It was. It was a good school. Did you do Pledge of Allegiance and oh, yes. say a prayer and all and that say in the morning? A prayer every morning. Sure did. did you have programs like at All Christmas the time. and other? Mm -hmm. We even entertained the uh, male patients. 
out there. Uh -huh. We would do little skits for them and sing for them and things like that. Had busing to take you there, or did you have to recruit parents? To drive a bus to took us. A bus. a bus took us. Uh huh. Yeah. So the school had electricity. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. No air conditioning. No, no, no. Yeah, that heat though. <laughs> those old radiators, you know. Yeah. All those. Oh, they'd be so hot. You know? <laughs> no air. <laughs> Would you have spelling bees? No, we never did have a spelling bee that I know of. I don't think. No, I don't think we did. Uh -huh. Debate teams? No. Uh -huh. Pep clubs? Yeah. Yeah. Cheerleaders, I guess. Pep clubs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. My mother, <laughs> she was a cheerleader. Had she? She'd gone there too, I guess. Yeah. 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 They all went there. Oh. Uh huh. The school was important for the community, wasn't it? Oh, yes. Was it? Yes, it was. When they closed it and separated, the, did that impact the community much? Oh, not too bad. Huh? You know, they still kept the school open, but they only had great school, you know, and it was integrated also. And they changed the name of the school to Southeast, but then they eventually turned it back to Attucks. I was not. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Have any idea where that name came from? Addicts? Addicts, uh -huh. yes. Um, there's a guy named Addicts. Christopher Addicts. I'm trying to think, what did he do? I can't remember. But that's who, that's who it was named for, Christopher mm -hmm. Addicts. Not just something for Oklahoma, but it must have been bigger, some bigger. Well, some important historic history. Yeah, person in history, yeah, I don't think. yeah. Some important person in history. I'll look it up when I get back. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's kind of like Langston. That you see that name on other things oh, yeah. too. So yeah, I was curious. Was your mother a homeroom, homeroom mother? Or yes. Did they oh, have yeah. that? I guess they I should say PTA. They had that. Uh -huh. PTA. Yeah, they had the PTA. An active one. And that very active. Would they have fall carnivals? No, we never did have a carnival. Never did. Art classes? Art? No. No, no art? Mm -hmm. Just music? Just music. music. Mm -hmm. And math and science? And math and science, plenty of it. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Well, when they when they made you switch over to Bonita, did you ride a bus? No, we walked. No, we walked too. Mm -hmm. So it both wasn't, of them it wasn't that far. Get to both of them. Mm -hmm. Twenty fifteen minute walk. Yeah, about maybe about five. twenty minutes. And then if it rained or snowed or whatever, my dad would take us. They had a car, you know. Uh huh. By that time. Uh huh. Did your mother so much? All the time. She used to make all of our clothes, except the boys. And she made the girls' clothes. Didn't do the boys, though. Mm -mm. I think that's where I learned to so sew. I used to make all my clothes. Well, did they have home ec in, in attics? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you wouldn't have had it. You I wouldn't have been, you wouldn't have been no, old I didn't enough. have it. Uh -uh. So that may be where she learned? Probably so. She even cut her own patterns and stuff out. Mm -hmm. She'd look in the catalog and see something and She'd cut that pattern out and make it. She was pretty, she was pretty talented lady. <laughs> One of the best cooks <laughs> that there is. What was her favorite dish? You know, I don't know what her favorite dish was, but she loved to get in there and make just a plain old cake. And that was the best tasting cake. <laughs> From scratch? From scratch. No recipes and that she never used a recipe. Never. Did they have a garden? Uh, did we have a garden? Yes, mm -hmm. we did. All the south you'd have to see <laughs> you'd have to see the the lots. All the south side and all the west side. Garden. And finally, my mother she got tired of the garden, so she planted a bunch of fruit trees out there <laughs> in the back. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, she still had to can, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Can the fruit. Yeah. But at least she didn't have to tend to it to them <laughs> like she did the garden when we did too. We'd have to get out there and pull weeds and stuff. And, and yeah. she did. She did a lot of canning, or your, and your grandmother too, I guess. We all did. <laughs> we all helped. I'm getting tired of peeling those old peaches, and I reach up under that water and I squeeze them. <laughs> Trying to get rid of them. <laughs> I was hungry. <laughs> you solve problems creatively. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Instead of being ornery. Yes. <laughs> uh, they had a big cellar then if they had, if she can. Well, they had what they called a, a smokehouse hmm. a long time ago. They even smoked their meats and stuff. That Now, that was before before I came along. But they would smoke their meats and stuff. And they burned coal. They had what they call a coal house. And uh, we had this big old stove right in the front. And you talk, it'd keep the whole house warm. All 17 rooms? Just about. I tell you, that heat would go upstairs and it would be something else. <laughs> Don't get close to it, you burn yourself. <laughs> Got scars all over me from that stove. <laughs> well, did the house have an indoor uh, toilet, ba oh, yeah. bathtub, shower, whatever? Yeah, yeah. Bathtub, I guess, in those yeah. days. One upstairs and one downstairs. Oh. You didn't have to worry about going to the outhouse then. No, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Never went to an outhouse. <laughs> A lot of people have. Oh, I know. I to, just asking. I know. There was a guy that lived down the street from us. He hasn't had bathroom facilities very long at all. Hmm. Maybe 10 years. Really? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm By choice or by necessity? I guess. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Was that, did the house have electricity? Oh, yeah. By that, by that time? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when your grandparent built it, would they have already had yeah, they had power by then, I guess? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can't imagine a 17-room. <laughs> <laughs> Growing up in a 17-room house. Well, but you'd have to. Plenty of room to, if you wanted to be by yourself, you could mm -hmm. find a spot. And we had a third floor that they had parties and stuff. You know, uh, a lot of addicts proms was, were held there, mm -hmm. and uh, they had big bands that would come and play on weekends, and I mean, it just, everybody came there mm. it's kind of for the everything. The community center for, mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. for, the, for the neighborhood. Uh -huh. Do you remember some of the bands? Only one I really remember was the Ivory Star, and he used to come there all the time. <laughs> uh, the dances would be slow dance, ballroom, jitterbug, what? Oh, just everything. Uh, all of it? Uh-huh, all of it. Huh. Yeah. And you'd get to go? No. No? Not until later. Not until later. Not until later. Yeah. Well, but when you were in addicts, did they have still have them there? Yeah, we had them. Had them there. We had the parties oh, there. Uh -huh. They sure did. Mm -hmm. We had parties there even after I grew up. Cause they're about. Well, where can we have a party? I said, Well, we still got two nineteen empty hall upstairs. <laughs> So we had several, several parties there. So the third floor wasn't broken into individual rooms? It had two rooms, one two, on each end. Two big ones. Mm -hmm. And then a great big hallway, almost as big as, you know, as long as the house. Hmm. Had a piano. Had a piano. Did you take piano lessons? Yes, I did. Can't play today. <laughs> 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 My piano teacher, you know, she had a habit of hitting your fingers when you mess up, you know. Mm -hmm. And I got tired of that and I just quit. <laughs> you would have to do recitals too, mm -hmm. did you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure did. 
Mrs. Bly was my piano teacher. She was the principal's wife, the principal of Attucks. Mm -hmm. So they kept tabs of you in and out of school. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. How, how long did your grandmother live? She was 85, I think, when she passed away in 70, what year was that? 75, I think. And had been a widow for quite a while then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then your, it was your mother's mother mm -hmm. that had, had this 17 year old house? Yeah, yeah. And they had come from Tennessee, Mississippi. She came from Tennessee. She came from, okay. Yeah, she was born in Tennessee, and he was born in Mississippi. And, Co and then Covington, Tennessee is where she's from. Okay, and then your father. He's from Bonita. He's from here. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. And are they still living? Your parents? No, they both passed away. My dad passed away in '92. And she passed away in um, 05, 04, 04, I think. Mm -hmm. House caught on fire. The 17-room the 17 house? Yeah, but just that one area burned. And they never did decide what caused the fire or anything. Anyway, my sister was happened to be home late for work. It's a good thing she was because she heard the fire alarm go off. She says, oh, what did Geraldine do now? <laughs> you know, so she walks in there and she's on fire. And uh, she died from thermal burns. Mm -hmm. Awful way to go. It is, Awful it way. is. Mm. Shouldn't have asked that question. I mean, I mean, she didn't, you know, completely burn up or anything like that. Okay. She just, bad scarring. Right. Yeah. Mm. Well, they had a pretty long life otherwise than if they yeah. went into their 80s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she would be She would be 88 now. And do you have children? Do Three. you Do you have children? Uh-huh. And did they go to, no, they wouldn't have gone to attics. Well, they went to Southeast. Southeast, okay. Mm -hmm. And are they in Vanita? Yeah, they're, they're in Vanita. They all stayed home too, huh? They all stayed home too. <laughs> What is it about addicts in this community that keeps people here? Uh, you know, I don't know. Because <laughs> there's really not that much around here, you know, not really. Especially, you know, job-wise. and I guess everybody worked at the hospital. Now, my uh, middle daughter, she's a beautician. Angela, my oldest daughter, she had to retire early because of her health. She's got arthritis so bad where she's been thrown around and after that hospital. <laughs> you do a lot of lifting. A yeah. lot lifting and patients fighting you and whatever, you know. Mm. And then my middle daughter, she works for the Home of Hope. Mm. And I'm not familiar with that. So. Okay, that's for adult special needs. Okay. She has patience then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's it's really kind of like a private deal, you know. And they're all staying in Bonita. Mm -hmm. It's just home, I guess. It's, it's yeah, it comes it's down home. To. But see, we go all the time. You know, it's all right to visit Tulsa, you know, and I have plenty of kin people in Tulsa, a whole lot of them. And, um, we go to Joplin, we go, we go everywhere. Well, when you were in high school and a little bit older, did you go to Bowley any? Bowley? Bowley? Yeah, my, my uh, aunt lived in Bowley. And what was her name? B, the one that worked for the banks. And her last name? Uh, Irons. Irons. Okay. Lila B. Irons. Yeah, her husband, he ran the training school there in Bowley. Okay. I've, I've talked with Henrietta Hicks. Does that name sound familiar? She's Bowley. Henrietta Hicks. That name sounds. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like lots of good stories of Bowley. Uh huh. It was a happening place uh -huh. back in its day. Uh huh. Yeah, I know. So I figured, and her sister both. <laughs> Joanne. Uh huh. Uh -huh. 
Mary Joan. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she, uh, Mary Joan and uh, my cousin that lives in Oklahoma City now, they were good friends in high school in Bowley. Well, they had dances and dance halls. And oh, all, yeah. All they, had, they had a little bit of everything. We used to go to Bowley and spend the summer. I'd go to Bowley and spend the summer. They'd come to Bonita and spend, you know, a summer or whatever. They talked a lot about True true Love's hamburgers. Uh-huh. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things they missed. Uh-huh. <laughs> so Bonita didn't have that kind of happening scene. For well, them. we had... Uh, my mother had a little restaurant before she became an LPN, and she did hamburgers and, you know, ice cream and stuff like that. Nothing big, chili and stew. Mm -hmm. And then we had uh, her sister-in-law's sister had a little restaurant right next door to us, and she did barbecue, chicken. I mean, she did everything, you know, and that little place stayed busy. Hey. Had it right there in her house. All the front of her house was a restaurant. So cooking ran in the family a little bit? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. People would come from other places to, to there too, or just yeah. mostly the neighborhood? Yeah, everybody would come there. Most of the kids ate, you know, lunch there and everything. I used to go there and have lunch every once in a while. Well, what was what was Benita the town like when you were in high school, around in there? You know, we used to have a lot of fun in Benita. Is all I can say. We did. I mean, <laughs> we'd go uptown, you know, look around, and we'd walk at night, and um, we had what they call the Sale Ground Hill. It's right down the street from up, from us. Anyway, it's a big steep hill. We would ride our bicycles down that thing. You talking about skin up now? I got more scars on me from that because <laughs> it was rock for a long time. It was a rock road, and we'd take those old bicycles down that road. It was fun, though. <laughs> and it was called what hill? Sail Ground Hill. Sail Ground. Hmm. Uh -huh. Did you sled in the winter? Well, if you had snow, did you sled down it in the winter? No, uh -huh. no. No, that was a little dangerous. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just checking. Not too many hills in Stillwater, that's uh -uh. why I was asking. Uh -uh. <laughs> I see a lot of kids, though, in the snow. Mm -hmm. Where Walmart is, there's a big hill right behind the old country club. I see a lot of them mm -hmm. sledding down that. Uh, what were some of the family traditions that have been passed down to you, or do you have any traditions that's passed? Cooking. <laughs> Holiday, holidays, we barbecue, we, you know, summer barbecue, I mean, summer holidays, we barbecue, I mean, we really do it. And then Thanksgiving, Christmas, and every holiday, we do something. The whole family used to get together on holidays, I mean, the entire family, Ryan Bunch, used to get together. Oh, what was the one dish that everybody expected to have? Turkey and dressing. Turkey and dressing. <laughs> Not a pie, particular pie? Well, they want that too. They want everything. My oldest daughter, she'll just start naming off stuff. I said, you're not going to help cook. I'm not cooking all that stuff. <laughs> I do all the cooking. All of it. And dressing from scratch? Yes. Pretty, pretty much? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Everything from scratch. Do you have a recipe book? Or did I, I have your... recipe books. I use them sometimes. Sometimes? Uh-huh. But like my dressing and stuff like that, I don't no. I have to have a recipe book. You just go by taste. And they they might not be able to replicate it. You might want to write it down for your well, daughters. Well, they watched me enough. Now, I learned to make it by watching my mother, okay. you know. I told him, I said, if y'all get in this kitchen, y'all can do it. <laughs> We'd rather you do it. I say, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, at Christmas, would you have a tree in, the, the, even as a youngster? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Always. Real or artificial? Well, we had real ones for a long time, you know. And then when the artificial ones came, I remember the first artificial tree we had was aluminum. 
Remember those? I remember silver ones. Yeah, they silver. Uh huh. Uh huh. And you had the lights, you know, the color lights mm -hmm. that you. It had a little wheel. Uh huh. It went around. That was the prettiest thing I thought. Then the more I looked at that, I said, "That's ugly." <laughs> Need a real tree, and it doesn't smell. You need that. No, smell. huh? You, you need, need that, that smell. smell. But now we use artificial. I'll get tired of one, go buy another color, or something like that. Do you exchange uh, Christmas letters? Can you tell what's going on for the whole no, year? No, I, I never have done that. Okay. Never. Now I have a cousin that does it all the time. Now some people get into it, others don't. I uh -huh. thought I'd ask. No. <laughs> <laughs> Have you traveled very much? Yes, just in the States. But, just in the uh, States. Well, I went to Mexico a couple of times. That doesn't count. Oh, that don't count. <laughs> <laughs> no, you may count it. I've been there once. Don't go back. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. You went back. I didn't like it, so I didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> but we, you know, we've been to California, Las Vegas. Um, I used to travel a whole lot when I was bowling. Bowling? Yeah, we'd go to the national tournaments. Been everywhere, Florida, Milwaukee, Indiana. Oh, let's see. Uh, did I say Las Vegas? Mm -hmm. Las Vegas. Uh, what's that other town in in, in uh, Nevada? Uh, Reno. 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 Oh, I like Reno. Lake Tahoe. There are a lot of places. You're actually competing yourself? Yeah. Bowling? Yeah. Yeah. How long did you do that? I've been bowling ever since the late 60s. And my knees got so bad I had to quit. I quit just about, uh, <coughs> I don't say five years ago. Do they have a bowling alley in Vanita? Used to have, but then she was going to rebuild and they couldn't get the loan, so she just quit altogether because they only had like a six lane bowling alley. Hmm. But we, we uh, always went to Miami or prior and bowled in leagues. How, how, how heavy was your ball? 12 pounds? 12 pounds. 12 pounds. Yes. <laughs> I tried I, I tried heavier balls, but it didn't work. <laughs> it hurt. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you have a, a favorite memory from addicts, from your days at the addicts school? Oh, Really, I like the uh, the music department. I really love the music department. We had a real good music teacher. Her name was Ella Mae Harris. And she was just really good. She gave everybody a chance at singing, you know, and stuff like that. But I really like that, and I like the little picnics we used to have all the time. You have to bring your own t or things for the picnic, or the no, school did it. No, the school, the school did, did it. it. Mm -hmm. Thing you miss the most? Things I miss the most are those teachers. I really do. Even now the, the teachers, a lot of the teachers that were from out of town, they stayed at our house for the, for the year or during yeah, just the year? Yeah, just for the year. They go home on weekends, you know. And uh, in fact, one of them just passed away not too long ago, Mrs. Uh, Marion Ford. She was the typing teacher. And she's lived in Whitener. And I, I uh, went to her funeral. And they would come and stay during the week and teach and then uh -huh. go back wherever and they go. Uh -huh. Interesting. We had a couple from Tulsa, one from Palm City, one from Kansas, somewhere from Kansas. Emporia, especially this brother, Emporia, Kansas. Yeah. Addicts must have been a pretty, 
pretty good place for people to come. It was. To want to walk to Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Did it have a fight song or a cheer or anything that you remember? A particular one? Uh, no. 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 <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think that runs runs through my questions. Is there anything else you want to add before we close off? Well, I can't really think of anything. The transitioning wasn't hard? From, no, from it wasn't bad, you know. After we did it, you know, we, everybody, like I said, everybody got along. Still have friends, white friends and black friends, you know. And some of the ones that were in your class at Attics was were in your classes too in Vanilla. Oh yeah, yeah. So you weren't just there by yourself. Uh uh-uh, uh, no, I wasn't there just by myself. Uh uh-uh. In fact, I think we had no dropouts. Well, that's really good. None. Oh yeah, yeah, Attics. <laughs> <laughs> Well, then I'll close out and say thank you very much for coming. Well, it's been a I pleasure. Enjoy. 